Hello, Internet viewers. My name is Frank Rauscher, and we're going to proceed on in doing the otter. Uh, I've reshaped the other side, similar to the one I showed you in the last video. And we got the hind quarter out on both sides now. And we have the front legs out as well. And what I'm going to proceed on is to show you how to handle the feet. I also reinforced putting that center line down so that, you, uh, let me bring this whole thing down, the camera, so you could see the whole thing. I'm gonna pause you for a minute. I'm hoping you have a good view of this. And what I've done since we last spoke, was I reinforced the center line down on the piece, both top and bottom, so that you could see that readily. I undercut along this line to bring the hind quarter out. I rolled this so it puffs out, and I've rolled it from here up to here on the body and roll that around. I, I made some markings here, and this is what I do sometime to aid myself, where I feel as though it's not rounded enough. Uh, I put a little markings with the pencil to correct anything I may have missed. And I'd like to see that rolling nicely up without having a flat in it. And that goes for either side. This side here seems to be okay. I have a couple of spots here and here and here and here. Uh, I also mark this out in here so that you can see the hind quarter and how it comes up and around. And then in the feet itself, what I'm trying to get you to do is in this area here, I had shown you on a video back here that we would make like the wrist how our wrist is coming in and then going out again we're doing the same thing on on the the otter we have it coming in it comes back about uh let me get a measurement on this for you and what i have the width of the feet or about five sixteenths. Uh, you can make them a little bigger, a little bit smaller, and around there, but you don't want to get any smaller than a quarter, at least five sixteenths. And then this will uh, come in a little bit, and then it flare, and this will be from here to here is about a quarter of an inch and then it flares out back onto the body and that'll do the same thing in this area right here where this flares back and i'll do the same thing on this side you have your uh quarter of an inch back it's five sixteenths across comes in a little bit and then it flares out and this joins up with the body now you can see I've already indented on this side to follow that pencil line. I got a little bit more to take off on each side, but that's pretty close to the gen what I'm trying to project here. And in the back, I do the same thing. You have uh, uh, five sixteenths across. You come in a little bit and then you flare out same way here and i'm right on edge here with this and right on edge uh, almost on edge coming back in the same way here you come in and then go out so i've undercut along these lines so that we have that shape and that's what i'm trying to show you now this is the feet and uh what we've done is i've used a pair which i'll show you next is here's the ram that i use for shaping 
And I, the pair I'm talking about, it's a ruby pair, and it looks like this. And I insert it into my machine, turn it on, and then I come in and I undercut this side of it. And I have a, it's a straight shot down. I'm not trying to round anything off. And I do the same thing on this side, same way here. And if it needs a little bit more off, I take it there. Same way in the front. I come in from the side. I have that going straight down. The long air. And straight down here. So you end up with like a wall going down. Now, what I want to also do, if I'm going to show you uh, one that's been basically done already which is this one here. And you'll notice that the paw itself or the foot is tapered downward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thin the wood that's on this blank right here. And what happens is where this comes into the body, I'm gonna ask you to bring a line down like this and we're gonna grind this off up top. And I'm gonna to go to the other side, and this is really too thick in here. When I cut the blank out, I probably had more material than I should have in there. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take, this is where it meets the body. I'm gonna drop this down and come back. So we're gonna take all that material away right there. So. I'm gonna show you how to do that. In the same way on the back, um, the back, the foot, as you can see here, thins down from the top, or what would be this side here. So what we're doing is we're going to come up a little bit from the bottom edge here, and we're gonna roll that up here just like that, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, I'm gonna come over and roll that up to there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grind this off, and we're gonna grind this off to get the squareness out of there, because that paw like cups and rolls around. So we're gonna be doing that on the front and the back, and I'm gonna do that with the pair. So here we go. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm going to take that down. Just like that. And I'm going to try to do that like I'm looking straight down through it, like we're routing it out. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to just do the one foot at a time. Bring it down so that it's completely flat right across. And we thin it out, but it still has a little bit of a, a flat in there, and that should be for both of them. Then we come to the front. This one just has more material than I need. So I'm going to come in and really grind a lot off the top of this one bring it down because I want a width that I'm maintaining here and that would be the same thing on this side see this side the wood isn't as thick this side it's a lot thicker so I'm coming in and I'm going to bring it down to that pencil line and then I'm also tilting it down at the end here so that it slides up Push the front and tilts down. And I'm going to take a lot of this wood off. Here's the pencil line that we're following, just in case you can't see it. This is it right there. So I'm trying to get down to that line. And I'm trying to look straight down when I do this, like I got a wall going straight down on this.
so both sides would look like you're taking that much down. And you can check yourself by looking at the other side, and if it looks too high, I'm going to come in here, take that down some more. And I'm doing this with what they call the pear shape, the ruby card. And that will get it right where I want it. Now I'm going to go to the other side, and all of this has to come down. We're keeping everything above my nail right here is going to go away. So I'm going to start up top. So I'm bringing that down. And we're getting that profile. When we look straight down, you can see this line's coming over and then dipping at the end here. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And you want that consistently straight across. So check yourself out on the other side. See if it looks the same on this side as well as inside here. Now, we're getting pretty close to where we want our feet. Now, the problem is... We have squared edges. We we put a flat because we routed it through here. I'm going to roll this slightly, just slightly. I'm going to roll that edge. All these edges that we created from planing it down, I'm going to roll it. Even the front, I'm going to roll a little bit. So here we go. I'm going to come in with a pair. I'm going to round this over. Just slightly. And then also the bottom. Trying to get the edges away. Now I haven't really tried to do too much with the front edge here. We're still maintaining this right here. But I want to get this coming down a little bit more. Okay. So we get, and we soften the corners here a little bit too. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Same way on this side. We're rounding that over. We're going to round this over a little bit. Yeah. Get the squareness out. We're going to try to look like a pole, but we're not taking that much material out. We're just rolling it around ever so slightly to get the squareness out. We still want it to look like a pole, and we don't want it, we don't want to take too much material away. Now, I'm going to take that down a little bit more. So, we have it looking like that. Uh, here's what we want. We want to create the toes, and the toes look like this. You have uh, uh, toes going across here, and there's like five of them. So you got to make four lines in the front here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a line here. One, two three, and four. Okay, like that. And I'm going to come across here uh, with one, two, three, and four. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a burning unit. And the one I'm using today is an Optima one. And I really like the pens on the Optima one. I prefer these a lot. I'm going to use this. I have uh, a temperature range on this that varies from very hot. If I really wanted it to, I can get this pen to glow almost red by leaving it up high. And, and you really can't see it too well here because it's uh, well lit. But 
I'm going to bring this back to about what I have on my setting, about a six. And I'm going to burn right on the line and go right through to the other side, straight down. And that's what I'm going to try to do here with the burning unit. And I want to come back, uh, not quite a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do that again. And as we go on these lessons, I'm going to show you uh, several different tricks you can do with wood burning. I do it a lot with birds. I uh, burn most of the feathering in on the top with a wood burner and it gives you beautiful detail and at a later date I will show you how to do wood burning as well where you can do flat art so I got my toes all burned out there now what I want to do is do the other side here I'm going to show you how to do this do the same thing here I'm burning it right on through and I am going to reduce these poles a little bit more they're a little chunky but right now I'm just trying to show you how to get the wood burner to work for you as a stop in creating the twos now we got them in there as well now, I'm going to burn these back a little further. I didn't get that far enough back. It's not quite a quarter, just a little shy of that on the burn. But we could come back and revisit that. Okay, so I shut the burner off. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to show you the the actual foot of the otter on the underneath side is like a pad, just like this one here. And that's going to come in right about here. So what I'm going to do is make like an oval in here and an oval over here, right in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is at least a quarter of an inch back. I should do this first. I'm sorry. I have you doing this and it's a little too early in the game here from a, about a quarter of an inch back and a quarter of an inch back i'm going to come in on the bottom of the foot with the pair and i'm going to undercut it right in here i'm making like a pad so i sort of go in and scoop out a little bit just I do the same thing here and bring that around. Okay. So once I've done that, I have like a pad in there for the bottom of the foot. And we'll leave it at that. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to round these just a little bit more with the end toes. Or just about there just about showing so I'm going to come in take a little bit more material in here and I'm going to take these down a little bit more and that's how you make the this has got a little bit too much material in here, so I'm going to round this a little bit more. I'm looking at the profile of that foot and, and uh, back leg here. It's just a little too much, as I'm seeing, so I'm bringing that back. I should be following the pattern that I have here, and these set you up as far as that direction and how far between these two points and that's what you want to maintain 
least a, a good half inch. And it's still a little chunky. And that's what you do. As you go along, you observe the shape and try to bring it in to really start to look like it's got that whole thing moving around. Now, let me jump back onto the other side. I'm gonna do this one. I'm rounding the paw just slightly, not that much in the front. And then I'm gonna take some down on the top. I'm gonna take some more out on the bottom here, just to make that pad a little more distinctive. Same way here. Then you can see that sort of shaping up. This curves down. And then what I'm going to do, just to reinforce what I have in there, I'm gonna go back with the wood burner again. And I turn that on. And I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna wood burn those toes in again. But this time I'm gonna make sure that it comes through on the bottom here a little bit more. And like I said, we wanna go back. Uh, whoop, right there, right there, right there. Right there, and then we come over here. We do this one again. There, 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 and here. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to show you where uh, the foot comes in. Let me get you the right view here. You can see how this foot comes into the body here. So this foot is actually coming back in and, and turning up just a little bit. So to be able to get that to look like it's coming in and you're cleaning some of this out so it shapes properly, I'm going to go to what would be a flame bit. And this is a you can call it a bullet. You can use either one. You can use uh, a ruby flame and you can use this bullet, which is a diamond shaped bit. And I, I prefer this, but the ruby uh, flame is excellent as well. So what I'm going to do is come in and cut right in here with that bit. You can see how it it gets in there to the tight spaces that the pair won't allow me. So I'm now going to blend that channel cut that I created out of there. And I'm also going to blend this out where the body, the, the leg meets the body. So you have to take some of the material out of here so it looks like that leg is coming in nicely and the body's coming down nicely. So we have this, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. If we look at this side, we have this coming in right here so i'm going to project that right into here and then this body will come and meet up with it so i'm going to get the bullet and slice right across there i'm going to blend that away so i can get the body separated from the leg I'm going to really take that out through there. 
And then I'm gonna roll that out. This edge is gonna be rolled around. And this edge, because it's so deep, I'm gonna change and go to a bigger bit, which I can now could get in there and use the pear shape. So I'm gonna change that out. And that'll allow me to go in and take a lot more of this out now. So I'm going to come in and clean that around. And get that all out. Now I'm even going to come in this side and sort of get some shape into the legs on the other side as well. And that's how you get the paw out. Okay, now I'm going to smooth whatever dents I put in there with the pear. The pear is very forgiving and really helps me out getting everything into shape and it covers an area without gouging if you had tried to do this with the bullet the bullet's great to get into the deep end but it's uh it's not good to try to smooth out an area where you're blending it away and i think we're getting there on on the feet there okay uh I still think I need to take a little bit more off back here. Just seems like that's a little fatter. So I, every time I look at it, I'll judge to see how that flow looks coming around here. If it's too wide, the same way over here, this looks a little wide. So I'll take a little bit more off as I go. Now, I'm going to go to the hind quarter and what we're going to do here is we're going to again burn in we're going to put four lines one two three and four right in there and we're going to burn them in let me do this on this one as well one, two, three, and four. So I'll get the burning unit. And the burning unit, uh, you can vary the temperatures and you can get it really hot. The burn slice right through. It It's great to have this because you can make a stop out of it. And what I mean by stop is when you're uh, trying to shape uh, things uh, where we're cutting in and trying to get a real tight area. And I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we want to separate the toes a little bit. So I will go back with uh, uh, the bullet and show you exactly how to open up those toes just a little bit. Right now, I'm just trying to get these toes in here. There's that. Okay, so we got them in. Now, and you could do this too. Well, with a bullet, you can, you know, mark the pencil in and then get the bullet. Let me show you. If you don't have a burner, you could get the bullet point and, and mark your pencil out. And where your pencil is, just run this right down like that. And even when we finish, like on the front ones here, just to bring the toes out a little bit more, I come in with the point and just sort of widen the gap a little bit and they stand out.
So that's how you could widen them. But you could actually come in and do each one just do it with the point of the bullet. If you have a finer, uh, uh, like uh, a diamond bit like this, you could actually go in and cut right on through too and stay real thin. You can even get thinner ones than these. And, and that's another way of doing it. If you don't have a wood burner, you could come in here and slice it through, okay? Now, we also want to get the pad back in here. This is a, a tighter quarters, so we're trying to get that pad about a quarter of an inch back from here to here. So we want to flatten that a little bit more. So I'm going to go back in with the pair again. And I'm going to come in on this side and make a pad. Thin it out. This is on the back side now. This would be, it looks like the top of the foot, but it, and it's actually the bottom. It's the way they kick back. So right in this area here, we, we for about a quarter of an inch back, we flatten that out. We come over to the other side here. And I thin out the bottom here, about a quarter of an inch back. Okay, and we put like a pad right in there. That's what I call it, like a pad, foot pad for the bottom of the foot. Now I'm also going to, as we did in the, in the front feet, I'm just going to roll them just a little bit, just to get the squareness out. So they don't look so squared up. So we have everything. We want to round it over so it looks not so squared up. Right now we got like a wedge in there. So we kick the corners in just a hair to make it look like a paw like that. Okay. Uh, so it's rounded on the edges and we're going to do the same thing on this side. Round that over, and you end up looking like a paw. Okay, you have your rounded here and rounded over here. So now I'm just smoothing things out so it doesn't look so squared up. The animal doesn't really have corners per se, so that's what I'm trying to project here is, is uh, we're rounding everything over to get... the feet out. Now, to finish the, the feet on the bottom again, I'm going to go back and this one is really thick in here, so I'm going to come in and reduce that down a little bit more. Again, with the pair, and I'm looking at this side. This doesn't look as bad, but I will come in. Also going to clean up the tail while I'm down here, where it meets the body. Okay. So, here we go again. I'm going to wood burn that one more time. So, that I can come back and go right through. I'm going to lay that burner. Let me turn this up just a little bit hotter. And you'll see that this will go sliding right on through. You'll actually see a little smoke coming off because I've got a very hot tip here. And this allows me to go through to the other side. And then I'm going to do this one. This doesn't go back as far, but the middle ones do. We go back a little further, a little further, and then we shorten up on the end ones there. There you go. Now there's the toes in there. Okay. Now, 
I left a couple things unfinished on here. And uh, we have where the tail comes into the body here. And when I had the pair, I got a couple of bumps in there and so on. I'm going to come back in and get a little more separation right in here with the bullet. And I'll show you how we do that. Let me get this. And I'm going to come in and clean up that area. I'm going to come in here, lay that down in there. It gets a nice point right in there. And then I can come in and get some separation between where the leg and the tail meet. And just a little bit of separation in here so that each one looks like they're gliding into the body itself and they look natural coming in on that. Okay, I think we have that. And then I had a bump here I was telling you about. I'm using the back end of the bit just to roll it. Most of the time I like to get a pair to roll a big area, but I'll cheat a little bit and use the, uh, the bullet. Now, the last thing for the feet is they have little pads right in here like this. And these are the ovals I was talking about earlier. I sort of jumped the gun on that. So on that, you can mark out well, that burning didn't come all the way through. Let me go back one more time on the back one. I don't see them projecting through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn through there so that you could see the toes on the other side, at least the burnt area. And if you were using a bit to do this, you would undercut through there as well on the bottom side and project uh, the pencil line around so that you can show a little bit of the toes as they come around. See how they come around just a little bit right there and right there. Now, what I'm going to do is get that pad back in there that I was talking about. And that's going to be right in here. It's like an oval, an oval right in there. I'm not doing the greatest drawing job here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in and flatten that just a little bit more. It's hard to draw on there, so I'll just smooth that out a little bit. And we will have a better drawing surface. There we go. So I'm going to put the pads there and there. And then I'm going to come in the front. And these are those pads I was talking about in the front. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and undercut on the outside all the way around. So it gets a little rise and fall all the way around. Very little on that pad. The pad sort of sticks up. And we'll do that on the back side. We'll come in here. Undercut that a little bit. It's hard to show you in here, but we're trying to run that all the way around. It gets kind of really tight under here, but get your bit back in there. And you get a little bit of a lift. Just a little lift. Same way here. Undercut along that line. You're always staying to the outside of the line. Of that other boy, I should say. Okay. And then you get a lift all the way around and again 
if you see any edges that may have developed along the way, you always want to sort of just smooth them out. You're not taking a lot of material out. You're just trying to get the edges away because uh, the otter itself doesn't have an edge per se on it. You know, it, they're very smooth. And that's what I try to project. So that's getting the feet on and the shaping of the body uh, where you have the undercut with the bullet bit and same way here and then the same way in here where you're slicing through here. So on the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the head and I'll show you all the details that are involved with that. So I uh, hope you like this session. Uh, if you'd give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. And if uh, you enjoy what I'm doing, uh, definitely subscribe. In the meantime, and I just remembered this, this here needs to be smoothed out. So I'm, I am going to roll this uh and this will be done when we are uh, come back to the next session. And uh, this I'll roll a little bit more. I mentioned to you, if you see any bumps or grinds uh, or edges, I should say, you can roll them out. And you want to use the pair, which is this guy here. It's a lot more forgiving. And you go use a back and forth motion. And uh, that should do it for you. So... Hope to see you on the next session, and thank you for uh, following me.